Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at, as before with the other fossils, um, the morphology and the anatomy of the group in interest. So in this case, we're going to take a gentle, and I, I think it will be fairly gentle, introduction into our three different forms of, um, of coral. So we're going to be looking at the morphology and the anatomy of first the rugose corals, then the tabulate corals, and finally the sclerectinian corals. So it's just a, uh, enough of an overview for you to be able to tell them apart. Though obviously the age of the rocks that you're looking at will help in that regard. But before digging into those three groups, I wanted to highlight some kind of commonalities across the corals, which you can see on this slide. So here's this slide is a handy, um, overview of the different forms that corals can take. On the left hand side, you can see the terminology, which you don't have to learn, for the main modes of solitary growth in corals. Um, in particular, this helps you get an idea of the variety of form from long tubular structures to the more traditional um, horn-like ones, and even some with square outlines and some which are very, very um, flat and, and disc shaped in form. On the right, you can see a series of terms for the main modes of growth in colonial corals. Once more, there's no need to remember the names of all of these, but I wanted to include this because if you're looking from above at a coral surface and you see something like this, it's quite easy to, uh, to say that those are corals, right? And they look like these individuals just ran together, so they tessellate a bit. However, there are other forms of colonial coral which are really useful to be able to identify in rocks. In particular, uh, I, these four forms here are, if you've not seen them before, quite hard to reconcile with uh, what a solitary coral looks like. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples of photographs of these in the next video, just to make sure that you're happy um, with the slightly more unusual forms that we see in some colonial corals. Ideally, what I would like you to be able to do by the end of this lecture is just identify a coral in a rock, really. Um, so before digging in further into the um, different groups of corals, I also wanted to give you a more general overview of their anatomy. And you can think about coral skeletons having radial structures, so those that are going around the central point, like when we're looking down on these here, these are each one of these has a series of radial structures, and also longitudinal ones, so ones that go down the length of the organism. They've got both horizontal and axial elements, so ones that go across and ones that kind of go, go centrally down the organism. Uh, corals also have a mobile larva sta larval stage, just so you know, um, after which they attach to a, onto a basal plate or a disc, and then they start to grow. I'm going to use a rugose coral to further introduce you to the anatomy of this group, but bear in mind that the different groups do vary slightly. So corals can be either solitary or colonial um, once they've settled. Um, as I've just mentioned in the last slide, a colonial coral will undergo a, a series of um, asexual reproduction phases to create more individuals to create a colony, um, whereas solitary individuals tend to just hang out on their own. Solitary, a, a, the, an individual of a solitary coral is called a corallum. Um, so on the left here, you can see an example of a corallum. An individual within a colony is called a corallite. So on the right hand side of this image, you can see some examples of some coralites. Either way, as soon as an individual has settled, um, that individual will secrete vertical, so up down partitions, which are radial in uh, organization called septa. So these are um, radially organized, much like wheel spokes, if that helps you kind of envisage them. And you can see that they are um, labeled in this diagram here. At the edge, these join a skeletal wall of the coral. This is a thing called the theca. The theca itself is often covered in turn by an outermost skeletal sheath called the epitheca, so the outside bit of the theca. Sometimes on the epitheca, you can see growth lines, and we'll come back to why those are cool in video number three. But those are called rugae, just FYI, hence the name for this group, rugae corals, because they've got prominent growth lines. At the bottom of this diagram, you can see the apex of the coral, 
At the top is a thing called the calis. So the calis is where the, the living polyp attaches and lives. Right? So oh, I say attaches, it is attached to it. It doesn't uh, go away and then reattach itself. But the polyp secretes a series of horizontal sheets as the coral grows. And these are the things that you can see labeled here called tabulae. So you've got the situation where you've got a cup, calis means, um, moving upwards, and the polyp is secreting structures underneath it, horizontal ones, and these are the tabulae. Within the tabulae, there is a second form of curved or angled smaller plates that are finer in scale, and these are called decepaments. So decepaments, so you've got tabulae, and you've got small decepaments. You'll see those more clearly in the, uh, in the next slide. Those scepter, those radial things, um, fuse in the middle um, to create an axial structure which occupies the core region. So that's here in the middle of the individual. And those are the general rules of organizations for the corals. However, I want to finish by highlighting this general section by saying that there is lots of variation in both solitary and colonial coral growth pro programs, as you saw on the last slide. So um, take that for what it's worth, which is a guide, but some of these individuals look quite different. So the, th the three main subclasses of stony corals um, are shown on this slide here. Uh, the Scleractinian um, and Rugos corals have both colonial and solitary um, forms. The tabulate uh, corals are purely colonial organisms. So that's one major difference between these two forms, colonial and tabulates, rugos and scleractinians are both colonial and solitary. Rugos corals are generally robust, they're quite chunky, um, they are calcitic, um, and they form both solitary um, individuals, but also colonial arrangements. Uh, and these, this form is more varied than that of the tabulates. So in contrast to that, tabulate corals are defined by having well-developed tabulae, these horizontal layers, hence the word tabulate, and the scepter, the radial ones, are usually very much reduced. They're either short spines or they're entirely absent within the groups. Uh, Decepaments may or may not be present. Anything that you find in the Mesozoic or later is a scleractinian coral. These are usually relatively light. Um, they have porous skeletons that are usually made of aragonite. So that's a lowdown on the three different groups. So I'm going to quickly go into the morphology of each of those for you now, starting with the rugose corals. So rugosans or rugose corals have well-defined septa. So if you're looking at a um, Paleozoic coral and you can clearly see those radial spokes, you're probably looking at a Rigos coral. Um, there are six primary septa called proceptae, um, and then secondary septa are inserted into four spaces around uh, the corallum in the order that you can actually see marked on here. I don't think that's particularly important for your purposes, but it does mean that when you look down upon them, you can see a few major septa and then a number of minor ones organized radially. Our horizontal structures are the tabulae, which you can see uh, marked on here, and then the decepaments. So the decepaments are, you can see here, these, those are those little curved plates, which uh, the thing uses uh, to grow, and those are well developed across the order rugosa. So there, if you're seeing clear decepaments, it's a fairly good bet in a Paleozoic rock that you're looking at a rugose coral. All examples on this slide are solitary, and so these are actually relatively easily recognized in the um, fossil record. They, they, they will often look much like you see here. They'll look a bit like a horn shape. Some of them are a bit uneven, but nevertheless, you can see all of these important features, the septa and the decepaments. Here are some examples of colonial forms of rugose corals. Note that when you're viewing them from above that they um, tessellate and that you can see the um, septa um, fairly clearly in these when looking from above. But if you're looking from the side, you don't tend to see well-developed tabulae, these horizontal, um, sorry, horizontal in that case, 
uh, structures. This image is being flipped over that way, the way that I read it. Um, so in section, you're not going to see well-developed tabulate at all. And that's how you tell them apart from the tabulate calls, where those, those structures, those horizontal structures, are very, very clearly delineated. Um, I would also note that particularly in the upper Paleozoic, you start getting complex axial structures, structures in the middle of uh, these corals, which also is another clue to identifying a rugus coral. Here you can see some tabulate forms of coral. So um, in these um, tabulate corals, septa are very much reduced to um, completely absent. Um, so they'll often appear as short spines, but if you look at this view, looking from above, you can see that there are, there's very little sign of those radial structures that we saw in the rugose corals. But if you look at these in a, a section going through the length of, for example, a, uh, the colony shown here, you can see that the tabulae, these horizontal structures, are really well developed. Here is a, uh, another example, again it's flipped on its end, but those are the tabulae um, which are really well developed. Bear in mind, and this is a reminder, no solitary forms of tabulate corals that we're aware of existed. Coralites are generally relatively small within this group and elongate. They're normally between 0.5 and 5 millimeters in diameter, if that helps. Colonies will vary in shape. You can find some that are massive, so create kind of like really large expanses of, um, of corals. They can be sheet-like, or you can sometimes have chain-like coralites colonies, as well as have, um, sometimes you can see branching forms within this group. Commonly within the group, the coralite walls are perforated by small holes called mural pores that are marked here to show you what they look like. So that's an overview of the tabulate corals. Again, only uh, Paleozoic, and so hopefully, based on this and the last um, two slides, you can get a picture of how to separate tabulate from rugose corals. Uh, the bulk of colourful, colourful modern tropical coral reefs, for example, are built out of sclerotinian corals. So this is a group that first originated um, in the Triassic. They've evolved a wide range of morphologies, both solitary ones and colonial uh, ones. Their, bio their biology lends itself towards cementation, so they, they're good at cementing themselves to stuff. And as such, they have a greater potential for reef building um, than the earlier forms of coral that we've already met. Secondary septa are inserted within this group into all six spaces between the primary septa, uh, as shown in this image here. And this on the left shows you a typical form for a solitary member of the group, whereas uh, you can see a few uh, colonial examples here on the right. Tabulae within this group are generally absent, so we don't see much in the way of horizontal structures when we uh, split a rock open to look at them. Um, Decepiments uh, may be developed within the group though. They are Middle Triassic and younger, as I've highlighted already. Um, so if you find a coral in a Mesozoic York rock or younger rocks than that, it's highly likely to be a member of the Scleroctinia or a very closely related group. Um, that may now be extinct if it's early in the Mesozoic. I find these quite um, relatively easy to recognize because if you ever look at them, they've got this kind of lightly built skeleton, whereas the, uh, the rugose corals, um, which look more similar to these that I think than the tabulate corals, are really, really chunky. They're absolute units of, cre of things. These are actually quite delicate in structure. So, but just by glancing at it, you can normally tell whether it's a sclerotinian coral or not. And obviously the, rage, the age of the rock you're looking in really helps you. So that was a bit of a, uh, a dive into the three different groups of corals and how you tell them apart. And I'll see you in the next video um, for some, uh, an introduction to what these look like in the rocks and a, an overview of why they're useful to us as geologists.